Hey everyone, Matt Gunn here from FlyingGiants.com. Thanks for tuning in to another video review. And early last month, we gave you a sneak peek of an upcoming review of the Futaba S-Bus system and its installation in the PC6 turbo porter from Flightworth. Now, unfortunately, I had to pause the review while we all went down to Joe Nall to give everyone a week's worth of coverage. And with Joe Nall officially behind us now, it's time to resume the build and show you how the S-Bus system works and how easy it is to install. So I have an entire system consisting of six Futaba S3072 HV servos. Now these are for the elevators, ailerons, rudder, and the tow release. And I've also got a pair of 3071 HV servos for the flaps. The receiver we'll be using is the R6202 SWB, and our transmitter is the Futaba 14SG. Now the great thing about the 14SG is that it's set up to work seamlessly with SBUS with a programming feature built right in. And that means you don't need a computer with the PC-Link software or the USB dongle. The SBUS servos plug right into the back of the 14SG and a quick navigation to the menu allows for programming on the spot. And finally, I have some SBUS hubs to bridge it all down to one single connection into the receiver. Now, like I said, we'll be using the Flightwork PC6 as our test bed. And it's a great looking 86 inch wingspan turbo porter in the Red Bull graphic scheme. And it has flaps and a glider tow release mechanism. So we'll be using additional channels to show how robust the S-Bus system is and how neat the wiring can be with all these servos on board. So let's go ahead and get started with the installation. All right, before we get started on the installation, I'll give you a quick lesson on how the S-Bus works and how it compares to a traditional Futaba 2.4 gig system. And in this case, we'll be using the 14SG transmitter, which has a port on the back to plug in an S-Bus capable servo and program it. So you don't have to use a computer, and that's what we'll be using in this tutorial. So the essence of the system is, is really simple, actually. It's just S-Bus capable servos and a receiver, and then this hub right here. And now the hub allows you to plug in to the output on the receiver and then branch off servos exponentially. You can use as many servos as your transmitter can take. And how it works comparatively to a non-SBUS system in layman's terms would be a standard receiver. You plug in your servos to each output and each one controls uh, one of your channels. On an SBUS system, all of the channels uh, signal goes to all the servos. It comes out this one line here, out the signal, or the white one here. But each servo is programmed only to accept the channel that you want it to. So with that said, that's your quick tutorial on how the SBUS system works. Let's go ahead and get started by programming one of these servos for an aileron. So let's go ahead and do that. To make it easier for us to change different servos out, I'm going to plug an extension into the back here of the S-Bus port, and that way we don't have to constantly pull a servo lead in and out of the back. So let's go ahead and turn on the transmitter. And what we'll do is we'll plug in a hub here to this servo extension, and that's going to allow us to plug in the servo and a battery. Now you've got to power each servo when you program it, the transmitter does not have the ability to power the servo. And so you can plug it into any one of these servo leads as such. You could plug in two servos and program them in the exact same time, such as two aileron or elevator servos or flap servos. But in this case, I'm just going to show you how we program an aileron servo. So as you see, we've got the extension running out of the back. We've got our hub here and we've got a battery and a servo. So we'll navigate to the menu on the 14SG for SBUS by going into the system menu and then over to SBUS servo as such. Now we're in the programming area and the first thing to do is to make a link between them which is called recall and it's on the last page. So we'll back up to the last page, we'll hit recall, hold for one second, and now we'll get the link between them. Alright, so now we're hooked up and this should be on channel one now, so I should be able to, to turn this, uh, our aileron stick here and it should move. There we go. 
All right, to program a different channel, all you need to do from the first page is go down to channel and make your adjustment to any channel you want. In this case, we'll go to channel two for elevator. We'll hit return. And then you've got to navigate back to the last page and hit right. All right, so now this servo should work on the elevator only. To show you the system in action, I've gone ahead and programmed all three of these servos here, one for elevator, one for aileron, and one for the throttle. And I've hooked them into this hub here. All three of them goes into a single input on the receiver. And I have this uh, battery pack here going into the battery slot on the receiver. So now each one has been programmed to a separate channel and they all work independently even though they come out of the same channel such as your aileron here, your elevator, and your throttle. So that's how the S-Bus system works. It's, uh, it's very robust. It allows for a lot of programming and it's very simple to wire up and get going. You can easily reverse the servo by going into the second page of the S-Bus servo menu and just selecting the reverse option here by hitting return, normal, and reverse. Okay, I've installed the flap servo and I purposely left it set to the aileron channel so you can see that both the servos are set to the channel one. Now this flap servo should be set to channel six. So I wanted to make it clear that you cannot just plug in this hub, which takes the two, a, the two servos, the aileron and the flap servo, and bridges them into the single connection. You can't just unplug this, plug it into the back here, and change it to channel 6 because you'll change both servos. So you're going to need to unplug the uh, aileron servo and only plug in the flap servo and then plug it into the back of the transmitter to change it. So easily done. We'll just change this like so. Plug it right into this lead that's going into the back of the transmitter. And then once again we'll navigate over to the menu like so by hitting system S-Bus Servo, changing channel 1, uh, first hitting recall to bring up the servo, completed, and back to the first menu, change the channel to channel 6, and then back to right. All right, now we've set our flap servo to channel six, which is this one right here. And the aileron servo is set to channel one. All right, I've got my elevator servos installed and wired up and I had to reverse one of them since they are an elevator servo on each side. And I've also got the rudder servo installed as well. Now the elevator servos run to about right here inside the uh, fuselage where there's another hub and it runs up to right here. So this will be our elevator and I'm going to go ahead and mark this right here with a number two for elevator as I've done over on the servo itself I put that little sticker for two so I'll always remember. Okay, let's go over some of the programming functions available in the SBUS servo menus. Menu 1 here shows your channel. This can be changed, obviously. Your ID remains the same for the servo, and if a servo were, were hooked up, it would say what the ID was. Uh, it cannot be changed. You can adjust your travel, as well as your neutral points and your dead band. You can also adjust the speed of the servo in case you're using it for a gear door or flaps. Um, reverse can be adjusted and your type of your servo here can either be set to normal or retract and now the retract if you set it to retract the servo will reduce the current 
after 30 seconds of, of being in a position such as your, your gear being closed, there may be some external force still on the servo and it will reduce the output of the, of the servo and reduce the current load. Now your smoother application is sort of like for sport flying, for normal flying you set it to smoother, for 3D and hard flying more precise movements of the servo you can turn the smoother off. The soft start will prevent the, the servo from banging into position when you first plug it in. It moves slowly. And the boost function can increase the torque of the servo. However, at, if you do increase the boost, you do increase the, uh, the rough movements of the servo. So if you're using it on very large items or large control surfaces, that boost could come in handy. Now the damper um, is good for um, slowing down the control surface when it gets close to the center section or its, um, its dead band. And finally we have our stretch which allows for the hold characteristics. It's going to hold, if, if you set it to a larger value, it will hold, the holding force becomes stronger and the current consumption increases. And finally the only thing that's not shown because I don't have the servo plugged in is the buzzer which will make the servo motor hum almost like you're putting force against it, its uh, control surface. And that it'll do that when you turn off the transmitter before you turn off the servos. They'll hum and let you know that they're still plugged in. Alright, let's go ahead and wrap up this installation video. We have the entire S-Bus system installed in the Flightwork Pilatus Turbo Porter. You can see the S-Bus receiver here with a single hub coming off of it that connects all of the other hubs to all the servos in the system. So this is our wing hub and it has four servos total. It branches off here to another branch that goes into the wings and it controls the flaps and the ailerons. And down here at the bottom you can see those wires going backwards that connects to the rudder as well as the dual elevator servos here. So that's the entire system. The only thing that's non S-Bus is the ESC which you can see right there comes off the back into the Castle Talon uh, HV120 ESC. So that pretty much covers the installation. I want to thank you for, for watching the entire video. It's Like I said, it's a very robust system. There's lots of programming options and the wiring is extremely neat as you can see inside. There really isn't anything except a single hub coming off that branches off. So you don't have to worry about um, you know, crossing your ailerons, crossing your ailerons and flaps when you're hooking things up. You just plug it in and you're ready to go. So thanks again for watching the video and we'll see you next time.